Hello. Praise the Lord. It's drizzling outside. Seems wet, but in here it's sunny dry. Amen. In the light of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's prepare our hearts. Get seated. Thank you, Lord. Holy is the Lord. Father, you are holy. Holy. Father, as you sanctify yourself and your son Jesus and the Holy Spirit, sanctify the sanctuary right now. Sanctuary, sanctify every, every person coming in here, young and old. Men and women, elders, everyone, Lord, make us holy because you have indwelt us and made us your temple. Holy is the Lord. Stand up. We bow hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Is our strength? Do you that? We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! And together we sing. Come on, sing, church. Everyone sing. Thank you, Lord. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with the glory. The earth is filled with the glory. Let's stand up. We stand and lift up our hands. Lift them up. For the joy of the Lord. He is our strength, Lord. We bow down, worship now. Great, how awesome we see. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord. God Almighty. It's rising up all around. It's the end of the Lord's rising up. It's rising up all around. It's the end of the Lord's now. It's rising up all around. we sing, everyone sing, holy is God Almighty, the earth is filled with glory, holy is the Lord. Yeah. 
Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for bringing us all here today. Thank you for your spirit, the spirit that draws us to the Father and to the Son. Father God, have your way throughout this service. Lord, let it be a truly divine service where you are engaging us, God, where you are so interested, Lord God, in meeting us. It's not just a social gathering of friends and brothers and sisters, Lord but it's a fellowship with the divine being. It is you. Lord Jesus, thank you for being in our midst today. Have your way. Govern this service. All for your glory, honor, purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, amen and amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Um, let's look at our announcements this morning. Hallelujah. You may take your seat for a while. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to SPA. Thank you for spending your day with us. If you're new here, go grab a welcome packet in the back. It's right there at the usher's table, and we'd love to connect with you and your family. Here at SPA, we want to build a relationship with you. So visit us at spachurch.churchtrack.com. In there, you'll find our announcements, ongoing events, send a prayer request, give online, check out our live groups, and so much more. Again, that's spachurch.churchtrack.com. So who's happening in the month of June? June birthday celebrants, it is your time for you to be wished a happy birthday and we're having that on June 11. Men's Ministry, 8 a.m. Sanctuary, June 17. For all the fathers out there, our Father's Day is happening on June 18 at 8.30 a.m. We will be serving breakfast. Make sure to RSVP on our website or app at spachurch.churchtrack.com and make sure you arrive in Hawaiian attire. See you there! For those of you in a relationship, Couples Ministry, 7 p.m. on June 23, here at the Sanctuary. Once again, thank you for joining us for Sunday service today. So get your hearts ready, sing out loud, and we'll see you around. Amen. Um, I would like to remind everyone who's um, here today, please register in our spachurch.churchtrack.com for our upcoming Father's Day. Uh, so far, we have 47 uh, people counted coming. Um, if you would wonder why we need to register, it's to help those who are preparing for the event. It's not just, you know, I'm just going to show up 
next Sunday. Um, so be a, a good brother and sister and help out by registering. It, it's, it's so easy. Just click the link and it's just going to ask you for your name, email, and phone number. And I don't think even the phone number is required. And there it's going to ask you how many people you're going to bring with. So you can bring your sister, your brother, your dog, or mm -hmm. someone. So please, 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 in, in behalf of Shepherd Pastor Assembly, please register for this coming Father's Day. We, uh, so far, we have 47 counts again um, if you haven't registered register again that's spachurch.churchtrack.com it is so easy and that's all we have for you god bless you amen amen praise the lord praise the lord so yeah i mean it's important to to register and it helps uh helps with the head count um surprisingly when we have events like mother's day or father's day christmas easter um, I was talking to some of the some of the some of the ushers, and they said, "Brother June, you know how many we had today?" And we're usually used to like you know 60 people, something like that. But when we have events, it goes up to like 180. It's almost like times three. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we don't want to run out of food. So please <laughs> register. And uh, yeah, Amen. Praise the Lord. So stand up again and. We'll continue worshiping the Lord. We're here for God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're here for you, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Praise, Almighty God of God, we 
is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stand above it all. Jesus, and the millions of powers and positions. Your name stand above it all. Your name. the greatest your name stands above the wall your powers and position
Maria Yoslo. Give yourself to God. Let's surrender everything to the Lord. We are your Lord. We are your soul, Lord, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Uriah the Sayana. As a church, as one body, say, We're yours forever. We're yours forever. Use us, God, for your glory. We're yours forever. You bought us with your blood. We're yours forever. Forever. Come on, one more time. I'm yours forever. I'm yours forever. Come on, church. Let this be a prayer. I'm yours forever. I'm yours forever. forever I'm yours I am yours forever I am yours forever So here I bow to lift you high, Jesus, be glorified in all this and all my life, I am yours forever. Come on, let's bow down before him and surrender. So
for your glory, Lord, for your glory, for your glory, for your glory. I am yours. Thank you, Lord, for buying us. Thank you, Lord, for purchasing us. Thank you, Lord, for paying for our ransom with the precious blood of Jesus. We are yours, forever yours. Thank you. to say we are not worthy. But it's not about our worthiness, Lord. It's because of your worthiness, Lord Jesus. It is not our righteousness and perfection, but the righteousness and perfection of your son, Jesus. As your son, Jesus, surrendered everything to the Father, that he may fulfill your plans for your glory to bring salvation to all mankind. We in turn, Father God, as we confess and name you as our Lord and Savior, we surrender. And Lord, by your grace and mercy, help us to surrender everything, God. Everything, Lord. It may not be easy, Lord God. May be tough. We live in a dark world. But Lord, nothing, nothing, Lord God, can supersede your light, your life, your love. So thank you, Lord. We surrender because we are yours. We are yours, Lord. It is your life now, Lord, in us, living in us. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Fill us. Thank you, Jesus. As we go on, Lord God, worshiping you, Father, we give to you. We offer you our tithes and our offerings. These are signs, Lord God, in this physical world of your goodness, of your provision, of your love and care. And Lord, may we not fret worry, Lord, about giving our tithes and our offerings, Lord. We're not losing anything. We're gaining more, Lord, because you are the great, loving God and provider. So, Lord, bless, Lord, all that will be collected today. We use it for your purposes, for your plans, Lord. We want to expand, Lord, in SBA. We've been praying, Father God, for a new building, a new place, Lord God, because you have blessed this place with so many people, Lord. We're now considered full in this place. Lord, we're going to break down the walls. We don't, want, we don't want to do that, Lord. We don't own the, this building, Lord. So we ask that you will bless us with a new building. Provide the finances. Provide all that is needed. Again, thank you, God. We know that when we give, that you will bless us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you in advance for that new building. Again, have your way today. Govern everything that will take place today by your spirit, Lord. Sit at your footstool now, Lord. We will trust and obey. We will hear and obey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ushers, we have um, six extra seats right in front. Okay. Yeah, I see the angels. They're moving out now. You guys could sit down now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God's good. All the time. God, why don't you just greet one another? God is so good in my life. Hallelujah. God is so good in our lives. Amen. Amen. Tell that person next to you, and you look good as well. It's a miracle. Say, it's a miracle that you look good. There you go. Praise the Lord. We are, we are a miraculous church. I wonder what type of lives we used to live without Christ. And if you're still here today, I'd like to greet, just welcome one, uh, one special person who has been here, who, just, uh, who left a couple of months ago, and now he's back. Brother Miguel. Where's Brother Miguel? It was just a couple months ago that we said goodbye. We blessed him because he went to the Air Force. He did boot camp. And then after that, um, did um, some special schooling. And now he's back. Amen. Amen. How quickly time flies. <laughs> Praise God. How, are you gonna, how long are you going to be here, Miguel? How long is your vacation? One day, he could, have, he could have visited the city that he's going to be in, but he went back here to see this church. Amen. So praise the Lord. Thank you for you know where you should be, here in the family of God. Right. Hallelujah. And also, I would like to welcome back Brother Mike. He's been doing some missions with Austin in the Philippines. I've seen his Facebook. He's been winning so many souls. He said about 100 souls were saved in the streets of, uh, is it uh, Cebu? Negros Occidental and Cebu. And Austin coming back or is he back with you? Now? He's in Washington now. Thank you for reaching out to our people in the Philippines. Thank you, Brother Mike. Thank you, Austin, if you're watching. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good to us. You know, we got to keep praying for this church because we want to move out and move on to another building that we could call home. You know, you, you know this rule that when the place is about 80% full, that means we really have to move out. And we're, when everyone is back, you know, it, it is more than 80%. And that's uh, excluding visitors if we come 80 percent is only when when the when the members but when visitors come it's a problem especially with our um parking so we really really need to pray about uh, moving on and the goal is to have a building of our own um, that's why we have we returned the, the the building pledge but then again as we wait for the lord's timing to for God to provide us um, a building that we can call home, that we can literally fix and stay until rapture. Um, we might just have to move out to another place that's just bigger. It might not be the building that we want, but just so that we can uh, respond to praise God, the growth of our church, and have a wider, bigger place. Uh, so that uh, as the Lord continues to f bring in people in, in SPA, we can reach, we can move on and, and, and find a, an actual building that we can call home. Amen? Amen? So let's pray about it. And I praise God for the people who have just started getting visions and dreams of really helping our church grow. You know who you are. Thank you for just putting so much amount of time and, and, and finances into the pledges. Thank you. Last week, I talked about woke. And I, I mean, I could spend a class, a semester, of just talking about uh, the woke agenda. 
But there's so much more that we need to talk about. I'm just scratching the surface, just talking about the really, the tip of the iceberg when I talk about woke. When I keep reading on it, my gosh, all the agenda, each agenda could be at least two, two Sundays. And there's probably about seven agendas of the woke uh, culture. But I'm not going to go there until the Lord leads me to because there are other areas of woke that I really want to focus on. And that's, you know, transgender. Transgenderism is an, a very hot topic that I'd like to talk about in this church. I'd like to talk about the critical race theory, CRT, how that is impacting our schools, our universities, particularly even now in our elementary school. I thought it was just high school. It now moved to the middle school, junior high, all the way down to the elementary. I want to talk about that, CRT, um, uh, transgender. It's going to be a hot topic. Inequality. Okay, inequality in the system. I want to talk about that. The reason being is I need you all to know how to respond to it because it's becoming very vocal and our, our society is now adopting it so quickly that it's now becoming a norm. It's a natural thinking now and the, the new generation, the younger generation are, res are growing up with this thinking and if we don't know how to respond to it because they can respond to it intellectually because they're ingrained in school, very ingrained in school. They talk about it a lot, even in society. So if we Christians are not able to respond and give an account of what the Bible says, then we will lose a generation into this woke culture. So I need to talk about it, the basics, and how to plainly respond to it so that we are able to give another perspective for our children and our friends to see and that it's not just one perspective that the media is talking about or the professors in school, but there is still another perspective, God's perspective. And that is what I want to instruct the church. Amen? So bear with me. You, I know there are times I will talk about faith and struggles and all that, but we need to talk about the current issues that are hitting our homes today. Father, in Jesus' name, I need your help. That I may be able to speak your word with understanding and relevancy and that everyone here would be able to understand and to comprehend, to retain this information so that when the time that they need to speak out your words, they will remember what has been downloaded in their hearts from this pulpit. Father, not, our, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. It is you who will speak to us, not me, Lord. So the glory belongs to you and your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the topic here is responding to the woke culture. You know, this woke culture is part of the devil's, I'm going to say it now, the devil's agenda to prepare for the one world government. There has to be a destruction of the absolute truth so that when all these relative truths are all over the place and God is away, then it's easier for the Antichrist to come and rule the world. What more when the church is raptured and taken away and there is no more, no more, there's no more the child of God, the body of Christ is gone, not speaking the truth, then, then whatever philosophy has been introduced to our generation before the rapture, that's what's going to take control. That's going to be in the thoughts of the people. And it's so much easier for the Antichrist to lead a blinded pack of wolves when there is no more shepherd, us, guiding the way and speaking the truth and being the light of the world. When that is gone, then all these philosophies will now come into play. 
All right? Okay. The foundations around us today is being broken and destroyed. Okay? By woke or the canceled culture. It's in your notes. The families. What foundation? Well, the family values are being broken. The redefining of what is father and mother and children. Okay? That's being destroyed. Number two, the foundation of our nation, meaning no more Bibles, remove the Bibles from the libraries, remove the Bibles from the stores, okay? Remove Christ, remove the Ten Commandments from the courthouses, remove religion in one way. If there is one particular religion that must be removed, it has to be the Christianity. The religion of Christianity must be removed. That is number one. Don't touch the Muslims. Don't touch the Hindus. Don't touch the Buddhists. Touch Christianity. Because the founder of Christianity is the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The devil knows that it's one religion that must be removed you know what religion is, right? Re, lijo. Re means, it's a Latin word. Re means again. Lijo means to tie. To tie again. Who tied us back to God? Jesus. Religion is not an organization, not an institute. It's a person by the name of Jesus Christ. He tied us back to Christ when he paid for our sins on that cross. The true one who tied back, who connected us back, is Christ. And who follows Christ? The Christians. What religion is this? Christianity. And the third is this. The third foundation that's being destroyed is the stability, the financial stability. And the future hope of our children and grandchildren. There will be disruption in our finances. Look at this, the hyperinflation. That's the, the removal of the dollar, the power and the value of the dollar. Because when the Antichrist comes, there can be no America. America who polices the world must be removed. There must be an equality of all nations so that when the Antichrist comes, he will be able to control it. No nation coming in to protect the be, being the big brother. America is that big brother. Must be removed. The power of the dollar must be removed so that the power of the United States is diminished. Okay? So we see that today. Uh, inflation will increase. Okay, so this morning... I want to talk about, again, the woke, woke, woke culture. Are you awake? Yes. To listen to this woke? <laughs> woke us up. Wake us up, Pastor. You woke us. Psalms 11, verse 1 to 3. It's not in your notes. It's not there. Because I don't know if you're still... Do you still know how to open your Bibles? Okay. Oh, no, Pastor, I know my app. I have a smartphone. Then open your Bible app to Psalms 11, verse 1 to 3. Very simple. Psalms 11, 1 to 3. It says this. In the Lord, I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? Verse 2. For look. The wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows of the up, to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed. What can the righteous do? This is this is King David. The, even though he's a follower of God and he is the king. Many, many go after him. King Saul, for one. You know, here in this verse, it says this. And I, I chose this verse as a response to the woke culture. In verse 1, 
we see here what David has done. And this is what we should do to take refuge in God. Okay? For how then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? When we take refuge in the Lord, we will not flee any pressure that comes our way. But when we are not sheltered in the Most High, it will be easy for us to run away when we are tested by storms of life or when our belief are tested. We will run away. It will show how much are you truly standing on the Word of God, being covered in the wings of the Lord. When you are sheltered in the presence of the Most High, you will not be fearful as to run away when you are tested in life. Amen? Number two is this. Verse two, okay, tells what the enemy will do. The lick, the, it says the wicked bends their bows and set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the, from the shadows at the upright heart. We will be attacked. If the devil is not going to challenge us by sending us storms of life like that of a sickness, a major storm, or the storm of our children being attacked and the wrong decisions they make that's causing us so much pain. Whatever the storms of life is, there's also another storm of persecution. If you are a Christian, I will, the devil or the people around you will challenge your belief, will challenge your belief. And if you don't stand your ground and say something about God, you will have lost any influence in touching people's lives. As militant as people are today in sharing the belief, we also must be strong and stand our ground. All right? Number three is this. When the foundations are being... Verse three. It tells us it's a challenge. So what can the righteous do? When the foundations are being destroyed. Verse 3. When the foundations are being destroyed. What can the righteous do? What can you do? Christians. You stand up. Stand your ground. Believe in God. And accept the fact that you will be persecuted. Accept the fact that you will be ridiculed you got to accept the fact that you the moment you accept the fact that you will be pressured you will be persecuted it will be so much easier for you to share the gospel or walk the walk walk the talk but if you are in denial and you still run away you don't want to be you don't want to hurt people you don't want to steer the waters you you you're afraid to get uh pointed out and called a bigot or called a hate monger and all that you're you just don't want to create any any problems then you will always run away you will not be a light and a salt accept the fact that you will be labeled you will be labeled smile and say if Jesus was killed on that cross, I am willing to follow, deny myself, and follow Christ. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now, let's move on. John Phillips, it's probably there, yeah. It's also in your notes. John Phillips, in his commentary on Psalms 11.3, says this. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's in verse 3. The word foundation comes from the Hebrew word meaning the settled order of things. The order, it's settled order of things. King David likens society to a building. When he talks about um, society, he, talks, he, he uses the metaphor of a building. When the foundation of the building, when the foundation of society is law and order, just the foundation of society is law and order 
justice and truth. That's the foundation. If the law and order, justice and truth are undermined in a society, then what can be, what can the righteous do? In the original text, the form of the question is such that David can find no answer. When the foundation of society is shaken, the truth and the law and the order and the governance is shaken, what can we do? What can we do? Okay, let's go to the first outline. The foundations being destroyed. In our Western society, let me bring it back now. Law, order, truth, justice, morality, decency, and integrity. Those are the foundations of a progressive, a dynamic, a healthy society. Unfortunately, all of these foundations are being destroyed, being ripped from its seams as we speak. The trouble is that this woke culture, some of you came to me last week and said, I, don't need, I, didn't even, even, I didn't even know about this woke pastor. Because some of you have pretty much, you, don't, you have lost any respect for media, so you keep away from media. You keep away from anything political. You just go ahead and keep away from it because it's just not... It's not, it's not relevant to you anymore. You quit because of so much lies and cheat and deception in media, in, in everything that uh, you... But because of that, okay, you, you, you want to remove the trash and the garbage to affect your mind, so you pray a lot. Yeah, but then again, you miss out on what's happening in the world. And again, here it is. Woke culture has been going on and you got to start waking up. <laughs> and this woke culture is not from the conservative, that we have to wake up because something's wrong. No. But it's from the other side, where it says, we have awakened to all the mistakes the government is causing, and we will militantly change the system of America. We have awakened and now we will take back this country and bring it to where we want it to be. And to do that, we need to remove the foundation of America, starting with Christianity. All right? Because this, this country, the founders of this country were established and strong. Many were strong Christians. Not all, but many of the forefathers of this country were Christians. And the, the Constitution was based on the Bible. All right. And this woke community has, has infiltrated our schools the courts, our government, and our media, it's particularly our social media. An attack is being mounted upon the Christians, the Bible, and the moral values. But, you know, we should not be surprised by it. Because the Bible, these biblical foundations of our country will be destroyed in one way or another it will be destroyed so as to usher in the, prep, the to usher in the next event of eschatology the next event of the end times and that is the coming of the antichrist society as we know it particularly america must be shaken the foundations must be destroyed. There is no country that will overtake America. You believe that, right? No country. The most powerful country in the world is the United States. All right? How is it going to be? How is, will it be uh, quiet in the end times where it has it have no more impact? When in fact right now it has all impact. America will be destroyed from within. 
not from the outside, from within. When the foundations of America have been taken and removed and destroyed, and everyone will start to create riots and all that, and America will have this will not be united anymore, and some states will want to separate from the other states, and all of that, there is this calamity. There will be a destruction from within, and when that happens, America will not be what it is in the future. Then will the Antichrist come and take control of the world. Because of the fact that when the Antichrist comes, for us who believe this, we are in this church, we believe in the pre-tribulation. We believe in this rapture that must come. God must take us. And then the, and then the Antichrist will rule the world. But the Antichrist will rule in such a way that when the calamity, when, the, when many people have vanished, it will be the greatest, greatest chaos in the world. And where will America be? America will not be there anymore. It will not have the strength to, cre- to, 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 uh, to bring uh, order in the world. And therefore now this Antichrist says, we will have one world government. A one world government. The United Nations will come together and we will have one world government with one world uh, digi- uh, currency. You call probably that now is a digital currency. We will have, we will try not to create our own utopia of paradise. Okay? And this paradise, other than God's paradise, is the Marxism utopia. There is no other utopia that the world is trying to get at but this Marxism, which is pretty much similar to almost what the paradise of heaven is going to be, wherein there will be no more, there will be no more injustice, there will be no racial discrimination, there will be a perfection in the world. But only God can do that, not man. Only God can do that. Because only God can change the heart of man. Only God can remove the, the, the sin and, and the, the, the devil and throw him in a bottomless pit so there will be no more influence. Only then that God can create such a beautiful universe. And until God does that, man can only dream of paradise or utopia. Um, are you guys awake? Yeah. yeah. Can I hear an amen? amen? All right. All right. Someone says, Pastor, how come you keep looking up when I pre- you preach? Don't you see? I see angels. <laughs> yeah. I got to look at you guys. I notice when I look at you guys, you shy away. Okay, then I'll shy away too. I'll just look up. (laughs) All right, let's move on. Franklin Graham just recently spoke the National Religious Broadcasters in May 22, 2023. Just recently, just May. And this is what he said. He said in National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Florida. I believe, this is the son of Billy Graham, okay? I believe there is a coming storm that will must that we must all be ready for. The world has de- the world has deteriorated so quickly. We cannot be deceived and we can't be fooled. We need to get ready and be prepared. Graham said said believers in the United States are living in a cancel culture that wants to destroy Christian organizations. Adding that, we cannot back up. We cannot retreat. Don't apologize for the gospel. Just declare it. Just preach it. Amen? Amen. Declare it. Preach it. But pastor, pastor, I might be persecuted. Be persecuted. Amen? Be ready. Let's do this. All right? Pastor David Jeremiah said this 
It is one of the great ironies of our age that while we are living during a time when almost any behavior is celebrated, almost every any behavior is celebrated, no matter how sinful, we are simultaneously living in a time where any small misstep, public or private, could be the catalyst of our own social and financial ruin. The society says, oh, we are tolerant, tolerant. We need to be tolerant. We need to be accepting one another. But the moment you say something that you don't believe in this lifestyle, they say, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's hate speech. That's hate speech. Oh, no, you, you, you're, you're too obsolete. Oh, oh you're a bigot. They, the moment you say something from your heart that this is your belief, immediately you're a bigot. Immediately you're canceled. Immediately they're going to expose you. This so-and-so lied to you so, so, so that your business is ruined, so that your reputation is ruined. Yes, we are tolerant. You must accept us. But when you say something against us, you hate us. And not only will we label you, we will make sure that you will you'll be taken out. See the deception there? People say we need to be tolerant. But the moment we speak our mind and apply our free speech, now they say, nah, you are hateful. You have to accept us. To them, accepting, to them, to be quiet is to be accepting. To them, you must not just accept, you must agree. You might just say, accept, I, I accept this. They don't believe in, I, let's just agree to disagree. No, that's not, that's not, that's wrong with them. They don't accept, let us agree to this. We use that a lot. Let us agree to disagree. For them, no, no, no. To agree with us is that you must accept. And not only accept what we are believing and teaching, you must also help us propagate what we are teach, we are believing. Okay? And everyone says, not me. Not me. Say, so, Pastor, what do you mean not me? Well, because one time in the past, Uncle Henry, he used one of the first senior citizens in this church, started with us almost at the same time. Every time I would say something and people are completely quiet, you know, probably it's like they're probably getting convicted by it or they feel guilty or like, wow, what a, the Lord speaking. She, he would be sitting in the back and he would say, not me. <laughs> just showing to, not me. I mean, I, don't, I would just, completely, I, I, would, I would lose it. I forgot what, I, what would I say next because he's not me. Just <laughs> kicks me out of the pulpit. Not me. Yep, not us, right? Woke defined. Here we go. Let's go to the next one. Woke defined. What's the definition of woke? Well, let's get it from someone who believes in it. A secular of a critical theory and wokeness. A scholar, not a secular. A scholar of the critical theory and wokeness named Michael Young. Okay, is he there? Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't put it there. Sorry, guys. Michael Young said this, and he, he's a proponent of the woke and critical theory, said this. Woke, the view, the definition of woke is this. The view that society is oppressive. Okay, Society is oppressive. Oppression is the result of identity-based discrimination. Okay, That's racism, example, racism, sexism, homophobia. Okay, society is oppressed because of identity-based discrimination such as racism, sexism, homophobia, which operates via systemic power through the culture supremacy. The culture today, the, the traditional culture today, is looked up as too supreme Okay, and uh, it's creates, creating too much oppression. Okay, which we are socialized into 
And the solution to this is to rebuild a new system. The solution to this, to remove the oppression, is to change the old system with its oppression of discrimination. That's why they want to fuel this racism. They want to fuel this de definition, the redefining of man and woman and, 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 and marriage, redefining that because the old system talks about one man, one woman. The old system talks about equality of opportunity, not equality because of, 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 of color of skin. Remove the old system and bring a new system. Okay? That is woke definition. In short, this is me now. Wokeness proposes a Marxist utopia without social classes that can never come to pass. Okay? Okay. It looks at some real and imagined societal inequalities and critiques them from being oppressive based on sex, gender, religion, etc. You know, wokeness is completely about bringing forth a Marxist utopia. Marxist meaning from Karl Marx. Okay, without any type of class, everything must be redefined. Even the class of sex, the class of, of male and female must redefine that there's not only male and female, but there's also a trans male and a trans female. And those must be accepted in, and put into the dictionary and has to be taught from, 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 from the very beginning of the, of the young age of, of kids that there are not just male, female, but then there's trans male and trans female. And this has to be in one, reg, one class. Okay. So again, I'm going to talk about that some, uh, soon on, on transgenderism. Woke, wokeness is nothing less, I wrote there in your notes, wokeness is nothing less than a complete rejection of Western civilization and its foundation. Christianity, that's the foundation of the Western civilization is Christianity. Okay, The counterfeit religion, wokeness, is built on the false promise of a Marxist utopia. It will replace God and forces the entire nation to abide by the DEI, diversity, equality, equity, and inclusion quotas. It will be controlled by the ECG, environmental, social, and governance scores, and cross-sex pronouns. Am I losing you? Have you heard about DEI? Or the E S uh, D I um, D E I diversity equ equity and inclusion and the E S G. Have you heard about that? Environment, in, environment, inver, environmental, social, and governance. I'll talk about that shortly. Look at this. Here's an example. Pa Just this past week, Chick Fil A. You you know Chick Fil A, right? They're known to, to be boycotted by the, the gay community. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're people who don't even open their doors on Sundays because they allow, they, 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 they believe in, 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 the, in the seventh day God rested. Do you know that before I talk about Chick-fil-A, do you know that there was... What year was that? Chick-fil-A was, I think, the third or the fourth biggest um, franchise. How can they be the biggest? How many Chick-fil-A's are there here in, in San Diego compared to McDonald's? Wendy's? In and out? There were a few, right? And they also closed their doors on Sundays. But how can they be the third biggest in America? 
Because God blessed Chick-fil-A. But you know what happened now? I'll tell you next week. Chick-fil-A, an excellent Christian com company, just hired a VP, a vice president, for diversity, equity, and in inclusion. Training. Training, yeah. Whatever happened to just hiring people based on their character and comp competence? Okay, now you're going to hire, you must hire, you must hire the different, uh, you know, must hire the transgender community. It's okay. That's the case. But the thing is that um, they want to control Chick-fil-A now. Okay. And this is what the Chick-fil-A said in their corporate website, Chick-fil-A stated on their corporate website that they are dedicated to the DEI campaign. DEI campaign is part of the woke movement to change America. See? So eventually, the companies in America must now, I think it's required now that they have to respond. They have to welcome this DEI and the ESG. ESG is is is, is a score. It's a core. It's a it's it's a score created by the BlackRock uh, company. You know what? Have you heard the BlackRock company? You heard. I don't want to talk about that too, too much now. But this BlackRock is probably the biggest influencer of the world and they have a score and they will score you and if your score is very low the banks will know about it all the investment groups and big companies that want to invest in your company will see that your ESG score is low and if your ESG score is low then that means your company is not good to invest on your company, you cannot probably get money from the bank that much. You, you can't get more support. You can't get a stock broke, uh, stockholders to come into your company. Because that ESG says that unless your score is this high, you are a risk, uh, you, you are a very risky company. And you know, that score is all about do you accept the woke agenda? Does your company will accept the woke agenda? If it does not, your score will go low. And if your score is low, your company is now in the black list for, from, from, the, from the banks and all those who want to invest in your company. It's blackmail. Blackmail. They're going to cancel you with this ESG. Okay, so, and guess what? What happened with Bud Light and Hauser Bush? Now they're, 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 it says here, go woke, go broke. Right? Go woke. They, they received the woke campaign. Now, how much are they losing? $27 billion. The stock market has gone down. I don't think they can recover from it. They might even someday call bankruptcy. The biggest and one of the most successful companies in America is now going to go broke. Who's another one? Target. What happened with Target? Losing now $13 billion in the first week when they went woke. They lost $9 billion. Now, after second, two, more, two weeks and a half, it's 20... It's, 13, you know who's you know who's coming in too that just received this woke? Coles. North Face. All these companies will have to eventually be scored by the ESG. There's no more about capitalism and just sell your product. It's now you have to promote a campaign. You have to campaign for what is uh, the, the issues of the day. You gotta be 
Valve company in, in campaigning the woke agenda. If not, you will be scored. And if your score is low, goodbye. Okay. Give me a zero. Give me a zero. Give me life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Guys, next week is Father's Day. Next, next week is when I have to continue this. Because <laughs> it's already 1129. But at least I steered. Next, the next part is actually how are we going to respond to it in a biblical way now. But we kind of know already how that's going to be. That you span your ground and you hold on to the word of God. Amen. Amen. I will reinforce that next next week for next sunday is going to be father's day all right please sign up so that we know how much can prepare okay but i know but i hope that you've been blessed today with this message right okay let's stand up let's all stand father we thank you so much that we have you, and we have your word, Lord. Your word is our truth that we can stand on, that will give us direction. We have you to remind us that we can provide a better answer than that of the woke. We know what they want, Lord. They want some t sort of utopia, but it cannot be done without you. It cannot be done by forcefully changing and removing you out of the picture and allowing lord god the government to be uh, the guide the god of the society it needs to be you so again father we pray that we can stand on your word we can rely and seek refuge in you and depend on your holy holy spirit as we speak truth and life and to those who are willing to hear, to listen. In your power, Lord, we will overcome. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we pray for those who, who need you, Lord. If, if you're that person I'm talking to here or online, you, you haven't received Christ as your Lord and Savior in such a way that you've released, you've surrendered your life to God. Do so today with this prayer. Follow, repeat this prayer after me, and don't hold back, don't waste any more time. Let God take control of your life and show you the beautiful path He has prepared, the plans He has prepared for you. But you need to allow Jesus to reign, to rule your life. And you that you will experience the peace and the joy that you've been looking for. Follow this prayer to receive Christ so that you have someone to help you through life, particularly into eternal life. Dear Father, repeat this prayer. Dear Father, forgive me of all my sins. I am sorry. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. Now come into my heart, Jesus, and be my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. And take reign over my heart. And Holy Spirit, to you, I surrender all my cares, my future. Mold me, God, to be like you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now put your, body, put your hand over your body. If there's something sick, some, a part of your body sick, you got headache, migraine, you're losing your vision, you have back pain, 
you have a heart issue, diabetes, put your hand upon your body. We believe in, in this church, God heals. God heals. And while you're here, let's take advantage of that now. Let us pray for you. Put your hands now upon your body. Father, you know everyone here who is sick. You know the disease. You know, Lord God, the anomaly. You know the infirmity in their bodies, Lord. Whether it be tumor, cancer, Lord God, or any clogged arteries, Lord, or pain in their bodies, whatever. Nervous systems that are being attacked. Skin disease, Lord, of all sorts, Lord. In Jesus' name, I speak to that infirmity. Leave in Jesus' name. Lord, by your precious blood, wash away, Lord God, that sickness. By your stripes, Jesus, they are healed. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you've healed them. Even the people watching TV, thank you, watching this online. Thank you, Jesus. They are healed. Thank you for the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, the gift of healing flowing now in this church thank you thank you now if you're depressed anxious restless you're overcome with depression you're in despair you're grieving i speak to you right now be healed in jesus name lord i rebuke that depression that fear hallelujah the anxiety the worry lord i rebuke that in jesus name hallelujah for that also may come from the spirit or from lack of faith, Lord, increase faith in their hearts to believe in you, to wait on you, to trust in you, that you are able, Lord. Comfort them now with the peace that only you can give. Fill them with supernatural joy. Lord, may they leave this place knowing that, Lord, their issues are in your hands. Thank you for the repentance, forgiveness that's flowing in this place, the restoration of re relationships, and, Father, that prosperity will fall into their hands. Prosperity in their place, in their homes. We thank you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Let the joy of the Lord be upon you. Let the wisdom of God flow through your heart as you discern each day what is right and wrong. Obey the Holy Spirit. Be faithful to the Word of God. Be a light and a salt, for the Lord will bless your hands. The Lord will bless your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may take a seat for a while. Um, before we let you guys go, we would love um, to just to remind everyone about next week is our Father's Day. Who's excited for that? Woo! Uh, Father's Day is coming up. Uh, it's uh, we only have a week uh, before that, and we would if you missed our announcement a while ago, please register in in our website at spachurch.churchtrack.com. Uh, it would help us greatly to to keep track on how much food to prepare. And I, I was just told that if you did not register, you'll just get water and table salt. So throughout. <laughs> Throughout the afternoon, you're just going to eat salt. So I'm just kidding. But please register at, at spachurch.churchtrack.com for our Father's Day. Uh, again, uh, all you need to input there is how many people you're going to bring and your name, uh, your email, and then if you want to put your phone number there as well. And then lastly, before we let you guys go, who's our June celebrant in the building? All right, can, can I ask you guys to stand up, please? Our Jews, come on, give them a hand. And I was told that we would love to invite you in the front, and we would love to pray for you. All our June celebrants, please come up front. Uh, Pastor Rick, we would love to pray for you. All our June celebrants, come on, give them a hand. Sometimes they need encouragement. They need encouragement to, to, to come in front, and we would love to pray for you. We have a cake at the back. But we, this, this, this is the thing that we love to do sometimes. Uh, some churches, they, they claim they want to be family, but they're not really family. But um, this is, uh, we want to honor you. We want to celebrate with you, the, the June celebrants. Um, Pastor. Amen. Amen. How many believe that birthdays are a gift from Almighty God? They say amen, amen. All right, yes. So will you please extend your right hand towards our brother and sisters as they celebrate their birthdays? 
a birthday in the month of June. Well, Father, what a privilege it is to come before you on this day we recognize as the Lord's Day. We lift up our June celebrants who, who were created perfect in your image during the month of June. And Father, we just pray for blessings upon them. We recognize that this day, this month of June, is a gift from Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. And your word declares that our brother and sisters were created in your image. They were fearfully and wonderfully made. And you know the thoughts you think towards them, not to cause them any fear or any evil, but to give them a future and a hope. And Father, we pray for a blessing upon them. Bless them. Bless their families. And we pray this in the name that is above all names, the name that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, Pastor Rick. Uh, happy birthday to all our June celebrants. And lastly, uh, youth, we're going to meet at the back. We have a cake at the back. God bless you. Let's be the church out there. Um, a quick announcement. Somebody left their phone at the restroom. So you have, uh, we have your phone here at the pulpit. Um, there's no picture, so we can't really see whose phone this is. Praise the Lord. If, uh, if someone needs to be prayed for, please come up in front. We'll still pray for you, okay? Say, go ahead. Uh, someone's phone is missing. We have it at the pulpit. They left it at the restroom. Uh, there's no photo. So we can't determine. So please, if this is your phone, it's at the pulpit. It's right there. I think it's women's because this is not a man. <laughs> this is not a man's case. <laughs> So again, everyone, we have a phone missing, phone missing, uh, left at the restroom, phone missing, it's right here at the pulpit, phone missing, phone, phone, if your phone is missing, it's right here.